Hi there, this is Bob Wormsley from Insidium and it's Top Tip Tuesday time again. So on today's video, we're gonna be recreating this fluid countdown. We'll be using Nexus Fluids, of course, Nexus Foam for that detail, and we'll be using XP Flow Field to generate these custom velocities based on our animated number splines. So let's get started. In our scene then we've got our animated text spline it's just a text primitive and it's keyframed our value here five four three two one so what we're going to do is use this to generate some velocities to drive our fluid particles so let's just switch that spline off for now and have a look at what we've got we've got a cube in our scene this is going to be our fluid container and on that is a collider tag and it's set to normals inside, so it'll trap the fluid inside. Let's make that uh, uh, box invisible. We've also got an emitter. This is set to be in box mode, and it's gonna be emitting, it's the same dimensions as the cube, just not quite as tall, but the width and depth is the same. Then if we go to the emission tab, we're in shot regular mode with full lifespan and a radius of three. And then we have got a Nexus Gravity in the defaults and a Nexus Fluids. We're in SPH mode, sub-steps up to four, and we've reduced the viscosity down to four. Everything else is default. So if we hit play, we get our particles and they're going to play in our scene. There we go. Now, because there's not anything going on in here apart from the gravity, they've fallen to the um, bottom of our container and now they're just static. So we're not actually seeing much detail. So let's give these fluid particles some interesting velocities. Let's go to our flow field and activate it. I'm just gonna switch off the emitter and the fluid. So our flow field works within a bounds as well. So in our flow field, we've set the size of this to be exactly the same as our cube container. And now what we're going to do is layer up a couple of layers here to generate the velocities. And we want to use the spline. So what we're going to do is add a, a long spline layer. And within this, you need to then drag in the spline that you want to use. Now, if I just drag in my text spline, um, you'll see that we're getting these really cool velocity trails, which are visualizing the velocities being generated. What I'm going to do, instead of using our text spline, what we're going to do is resample this text spline with an even number of points. And the way we'll do that is dead easy. We're going to go to Insidium, Mesh Tools. We're going to use Mesh Tools Spline Sample, drag the spline as a child, and we get something that looks like this. It looks a bit weird. And what's happening is it's only using 10 points to resample that spline, which obviously is not enough. Let's just close the spline. And if we increase that number, you'll see, look, we start to get the shape of our um, of our numbers back in. But instead of doing uniform, I'm going to use an equal distance between points. It doesn't have to be that fine. Let's raise those up. Something like that. Excellent. And I'm going to add some smoothing to smoothen off those corners. So now we have got this really nicely um, generated a resampled spline. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're going to go back to my flow field and our along spline layer, I'm going to use the spline sample, not the text spline underneath. There we go. So now we have got that. We've just got some, because it kind of samples each point, the uh, flow field, because we've made that nice even uh, resampled text spline, we're getting a much more regular and even uh, velocity vector uh, generation. So that's looking really cool. So just with that on, let's just have a one quick look at some of the settings. We're going to leave most of the things in default, but... We are going to set this. We can either have this affect the particle direction, so it will rely on the speed from the drop in gravity, and it'll just um, make them go in the direction of our uh, new velo uh, our new kind of velocity vectors. We can use velocity, which will actually give them speed as well, or we can use acceleration. We're going to use velocity, and we're going to give them a speed of say 160. So now, if we switch on our emitter and our fluids again, let's make the flow field invisible. Hit play. And now we're getting these velocity vectors in our fluid. And as that changes, yeah, look, we can see our fluid going along our splines. Excellent. 
Now we can um, add uh, layers of these flow field effects. So let's just switch off our along spline and let's bring a two spline layer in. Now this is going to attract, obviously attract the particles to the spline. It'll create vectors going towards the spline. So let's, with our two spline, drag in our spline sample. We'll just come to the first frame, make that flow fit visible. So now we've got these um, velocities going towards the spline. So this is obviously going to look very different. This isn't going to be what we want, but we're going to get a much more kind of noisy, splashy sim as the particles get attracted to that spline and it changes. But if we mixed these two effects, these two layers, we could get something that's going to look start looking quite interesting. So to do that, let's activate both. Now it's a layering system. So what we could do is use a blend mode on this top blend. Here are our blend modes here, look. But we could just leave it in normal, but just reduce the strength of that top two spline one. So now we're going to get a bit of the along and a bit of the two spline. So let's have a look. So yeah, look, we've got that nice flow around our um, letters again, our numbers, but now we've got a bit of a two spline pulling them towards that spline as well. So obviously you can um, mess around with this as much as you want. You can introduce much more kind of chaos into this by adding a turbulence layer as well. You could add a turbulence modifier, which will work on top of this flow fields effects. Um, that is uh, perfectly valid. But for us, this will do fine just as it is. What I'm going to do is cache this out quickly because we want to add some foam. So to cache it, I'm going to go to Insidium X Particles Cache. And I'm just going to leave this in the defaults, cache it to my documents, bill cache. Now it's only, what is it, 170 frames long, this timeline. So it's going to cache really quickly. But the benefit of this is that once this has cached these fluid particles, I can switch everything off, well, virtually everything off, and then do the foam on top of that without having to recalculate all of the flow field stuff. So that's cached. So I can switch off the spline sample. I can switch off the fluids. I can switch off the flow field. All we need active is the emitter and we need a gravity for the foam to work. If we hit play, there's our cached particles. So let's generate some foam with that. We can go to Insidium, X Particles, Nexus and bring in an NX foam. There it is. This needs its own dedicated emitter. So we can just click add emitter and it brings it in. In that emitter, I'm just going to leave it as it is, but apart from the display, we want, I'm just going to put it on dots, so they're nice and fine. Let's go back to our foam settings. And what we're going to do is get rid of our aerate particles. We're just going to do crest particles. I'm just going to make a couple of changes. Uh, we don't need as many, so we'll reduce the crest rate. We don't want loads. We want them to start generating crest particles almost straight away. Let's put after seven frames. And we don't need our foam particles to live quite this long, really. Let's just kill them off after maybe 70 frames. Let's leave everything else default. I'm just going to make the fluid particles invisible. Let's hit play. And we should be, yes, oh, really cool. There are our foam particles. And as always, the foam just brings out all that detail and makes it pop. Fantastic. So then we can have that with our fluid particles as well. And then we've got both our fluid and then we've got our foam bringing us that really nice fine detail. And then obviously at render time for this render, we can bring in elements like glowing um, splines of our animated numbers as well that's entirely up to you but that is how you can set up these cool custom velocity vectors using flow field use that in nexus fluids and then make some foam particles off of that cached fluid sim